Hey guys, welcome back to Team Dead Slinger. My name is Peter, and today I want to show you guys the stats tool that I made. Um, we're not actually going to go over all the functionality of the stats tool today. I'm going to do that um, in another video, but what I want to do in today's video, because we can't get around it, we can't talk about the stats tool without seeing this big Ukomon plastered right on the screen. So we're going to talk about Ukomon today. Now, before we talk about Ukomon, we got to go over a couple things because this is uh, data, and uh, I'm in a data analytics class right now. And what we learn in data analytics is that everything has to be taken with a grain of salt, uh, and it is appropriate to kind of discuss where data comes from so that you can form an educated opinion on it. So the place where this data comes from is going to be linked in the description down below. And you need to understand that it is not a complete data set. We have regionals information all the way back from BT4 up till... Uh, at the time, the most recent regional, and we have what is considered uh, local tournament information back from BT15 uh, onwards. And this information is not complete. Not every list is a top 16. Uh, some lists are top eights. Some of the older tournaments are top fours. Um, and the local uh, tournament information is going to present some data bias because it is uh, limited. It is only from BT15 onwards, and there's a significantly lower amount of that data than there is regionals. For, for regionals, we have almost 1,700 deck lists, and for locals, we have about 1,000. So that is going to skew some parameters, uh, like our casual representation and our overall representation. Um, but now that you know that, uh, you can kind of interpret the data as you see fit. So the second thing that I want us to keep in mind is that I'm not advocating for any action against this card. I'm not advocating that this card should be banned, uh, and I'm not advocating that this card is necessarily healthy for the game. What I want to do is present data to you guys so that you uh, can form an opinion, perhaps, one way or the other, whether you think this card is healthy uh, and something that should exist, or if you think it's not. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the data. Why are we talking about Ukomon? I made this tool because uh, I thought it'd be cool. I'm in a data analytics class and I wanted some portfolio items for when I graduate college. Um, and you can see on the left here, I generated the top 25 uh, most used cards by quantity uh, in the Digimon card game. And the top one here uh, is BT16 Ukomon. So we're going to look at some stats related to BT16 Ukomon. And you can see I have six graphs generated here in the middle of the screen. Um, so the top left one shows overall usage over time, and the one next to it shows competitive usage over time. And what these figures are is the total number of uh, quantity of a card run uh, in a given format uh, for this particular card. So uh, we're going to pay more attention to the competitive stats because, again, like I said, the local stats are inflated. Uh, but you can see the competitive usage over time uh, starts in BT16 because that is the earliest set. Uh, EX6 has the highest representation of almost 300 copies played. We dip down in BT17, stay rather stable in EX7, and the BT18-19 is rather low. Um, but the reason for that is because uh, this data set currently only has like one regional event for BT18-19, so we don't have a lot of data. The, the number of quantity is going to be rather low because of that. So to compensate for situations where quantity might not be the most appropriate metric to measure uh, the representation of a card, we have a parameter called deck representation. So we have deck representation by format and competitive deck representation by format. Um, and this tells you the number of decks that this card showed up in uh, to accurately represent its uh I guess, presence in the meta. So if you have something like a level 7 that is uh, really good and it's in every uh, deck of a specific archetype, well, naturally, the quantity of that card would be lower um, than a card that you have to run four of because it's a rookie searcher like Ukobon. So uh, what this parameter is going to do is show you, well, it was in 30 decks out of the 60 that topped, so this has a, a representation of 50%. So we can look at the competitive deck representation by format uh, for BT16, EX6, stuff like that, uh, and we can see that it's really, really high for... Uh, uh, BT16 Ukomon here, we have over 70 decks that it was present in in BT16, uh, almost 90 in EX6, and then it tapers down. This is going to follow the same general shape uh, as our quantity uh, usage here, because this card is not restricted. You want to run it at 4 because it is a searcher, um, and so the, ge the general trends are the same. You can see the deck representation for BT18-19 is really low, um, again, because we don't have lots of data. So what is this telling us so far? Just that Ukomon's been used a lot, right? Um, so let's look at the unofficial representation as a percentage and the competitive representation as a percentage, what this number does is it takes the total number of decks that this card was run in over a given format uh, and then compares that to the total number of decks that were available in that format so we can get a general idea of the total percentage across the format uh, of decks that this showed up in. And we can see, uh, kind of the reason I wanted to make this video is if we look at this card's representation in BT16, it's a 50% representation. This was in half of every deck uh, that was played in BT16. Now, we knew New Maimon was broken. We all remember that in BT16. Everyone was playing New Maimon. Uh, it was really, really good. And, um, well, obviously, this card was also run in 50% of decks that were uh, 
probably Nume Montex. EX6, you can see it dips down a little bit more towards the 40% mark. BT17, it actually stays really close to 40%. We taper down a little bit more for EX7, and then we see that this value is actually really, really high in BT1819. Well, the reason for that is because there are not a lot of decks. Um, this just means that of our small sample size, uh, a lot of them do run Ukamon, and that's going to make sense because we have a lot of hybrid decks in the meta right now, so it's possible uh, that we're actually going to see this number go up and stay high for this meta because Ukamon is generally good when you want to find tamers and make hybrid plays um, it's just a, a, a meta that's good for ukamon so we're going to see its usage probably if i had to uh, guess stay consistent with its bt uh, 17 and ex7 usage or be higher um so then we also have some uh stats that i've generated underneath the image here you can see the competitive copies run casual copies run um, but the parameter here that is kind of more interesting than that is our overall competitive representation at 16.1 percent now what is this representation um this overall competitive representation uh goes over how many decks this was in over its lifetime and then compares that to the total number of decks that have been played in a regional so of every deck that has been played since bt4 when my data starts um, up till the most recent regional that i have data for this card has been in 16 percent of decks now what we need to do to form an opinion on this card is actually contextualize it so let's look at some other cards uh, that we would consider strong or have uh, perhaps been restricted or banned so uh, a, a great example, I think, to look at here is the other Ukomon that actually got banned. So we can look at the promo Ukomon, um, and we can take a look just off rip. We can see competitive usage over time. We saw this really, really high in BT15. BT16, it slumps down, uh, and then EX6 uh, stays rather high. And then we just dip down after that restriction uh, to virtually no uh, copies run. Uh, and we can see the, the representation by format also really, really high in BT15 with the new Maimon shenanigans. Uh, we see BT16, it takes a hit uh, in its total representation. Um, I'm actually pretty sure this is because BT16 Ukomon uh, was released and started taking up some representation away from this card. Um, and then we can see in EX6, people were still running it if they had the space for it. And then we drop off pretty dramatically uh, along with our competitive usage. And then our competitive represent representation as a percentage, I think, is also really interesting for this card. Um, we can see uh, across formats that this never hits a representation quite as high uh, as our BT16 Ukomon. Uh, it never breaks 40%. Um, even in BT16, in its uh, at its highest, it's still under 40%. Um, which is interesting to contextualize against BT16 Ukamon because the, the general conversation between the two uh, was always that the promo Ukamon is just better because it gains you memory and hatches you an egg. But according to our usage statistics, more people actually preferred to play the BT16 Ukamon rather than the promo Ukamon. Uh, and this suggests a couple of things. Um, like the fact that statistics might just be meaningless and you have to actually look at the application of a card to make a judgment about it. But... Um, you know, aside from that, overall competitive representation for this card hovered higher than BT16 Ukomon. Overall, uh, we have seen more Ukomons played across more decks uh, than we have for BT16 Ukomon. We see an 18.5 percentage uh, representation. Um, and then we can also look at some other cards that perhaps we could just call good. Uh, actually, what do we want to look at? Let's, let's look at Awakening of a Golden Knight. Um, so you can get an idea of what a uh, semi-normal card looks like. Uh, Awakening, this was also restricted, and, and we can see that if we actually tried to use usage stats to judge if this card needed to be banned or not, uh, it's really interesting because this card had no usage, and then people figured out, uh, Magnax is out, and Magnax is really good with this card, and we see the usage spike and spike, uh, and then it gets hit, and it goes like way down, so... Uh, kind of just normal, 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 and then not normal. Uh, if you were monitoring this in real time and you saw the sudden spike in this card, you might be able to make a judgment uh, that it needed to be hit or restricted. Um, but then we can actually look at Magnamon X itself. Um, which one? Uh, BT16 Magnamon X. So the cool thing about this, I think, um, is this shows you the difference in representation between a good card uh, because Magna X is good. We all, we all talk about how busted this card is, how broken it is, uh, and you can compare that to a generically good card like BT16 Okamon. We can see uh, the overall competitive representation for Magnamon X is only 8%. It's half of that of BT16 Ukamon. Um, and nobody would ever suggest that uh, BT16 Ukamon should probably be banned and Magnax shouldn't, even though this card has half the usage statistic um, of BT16 Ukamon. I mean, the quantities played uh, is, what, half that of BT16 Ukamon, which makes sense because this is a level 6 rather than a level 4 searcher. Um, but I guess, uh, just to conclude, let's go back to Ukamon here. What I wanted to do with this video was just to show you some information on the card and maybe lead you guys to form your own opinions on uh, the quality of cards based on these statistics. I think uh, if we were going to make a judgment on if this card is a problem or not, we kind of have to think about this in two capacities. We have 
the actual usage statistics of this card, which suggests that this card's being played a lot. People like this card. They like the function of this card, and they need a card that does what this card does as well as it does. Um, but that presents a problem to Bandai, too, if we think about it. Bandai needs to sell product, and to sell product, they need cards that perform functions that we find interesting or necessary to competitive play. If Ukoman is such a ubiquitously good card, uh, and everybody wants to play it, everybody needs it, well, now the design space is limited. Do we make a card that's better than Ukoman? And if we look at these usage stats, well, the new Ukoman, or whatever they replace Ukoman with, could potentially have even more usage and be even better. And that could spell a problem, because this is already really, really well represented uh, and really, really well used. Uh, or the other solution is that you restrict Ukoman, uh, and you make a card that fills uh, the space perhaps not quite as well, and you fill in a couple of different cards that fulfill uh, the same role, but not quite as good. Um, so yeah, I just want to make this video, uh, get you guys' opinions on it based on what we see here, based on this information. Does this change your opinion about Ukumon at all? Does this make you reconsider whether this card should exist in this game or not? Or did you already have opinions about Ukumon uh, and think one way or the other about it existing, whether it's healthy for the game or not? Um, but at the end of the day, this stats tool uh, hopefully can be used to spark some conversation about whether uh, certain cards are healthy or not, you know, looking at their usage and stuff like that. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Thank you to our YouTube members for supporting this channel. It's people like Langlong and Big Z11 who make videos like this possible.